Welcome to our podcast series for business, brought to you by the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce, the South Florida Business Council, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, and the Chamber of the Palm Beaches. This is Dan Lindblade, President and CEO of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. And today it gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome Steve Tilbrook from Ackerman. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Dan. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. Steve is uh, also the chair elect of the Chamber Board of Directors and will be taking over at the end of this year. Steve, first off, I want to ask you, how are you and your family doing right now during this time? We're doing well. Um, I have uh, one son home from college and one still at college and wants to stay there and, and keep studying. And my wife and I are hunkered down with the dog. So all is well. We're set up to work out of the house. So I'm trying to be as efficient as possible and still uh, be accessible to our clients. It, it's, it's not an easy time, but I think we're doing as well as can be expected. Steve, just so our listeners can get a sense of your uh, subject matter expertise and the, the area in which you work within the legal parameters, why don't you give them an overview of, of what you do for a living? Thank you, Dan. I am a, an environmental uh, real estate development and land use lawyer. I work in the Fort Lauderdale office of Ackerman. Ackerman is a full service national firm with over 700 lawyers. I'm a former planner uh, and economic development coordinator for the city of Fort Lauderdale and also a former uh, assistant general counsel with DEP. So I represent uh, clients on the full uh, gamut of environmental entitlements and land use issues, uh, primarily throughout Florida, but uh, throughout the country as well. But, uh, you know, I, my, my land use practice is South Florida specific. Great. Thank you for that, Steve. Now, uh, we've been in this uh, since about just the second week of March with COVID-19 and how it's been uh, shutting things down in South Florida. How has it affected your sector of the economy that you, that you work in? Well, Dan, this is a crisis that we're in. Um, government's been shut down. Businesses have shut down. Employees are being let go uh, by the hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Um, and the financing sector is, has shut down. And, uh, and so money is not a, accessible to the extent that it was before the crisis. So um, we're experiencing, our clients are experiencing crisis management slowdowns, projects that were planned are being pulled back, uh, projects that are under construction or trying to be managed so that uh, the crisis doesn't affect them too much. And, uh, and our clients are re-looking at everything. So I think that this is going to have a considerable impact on our regional and national economy. There's a lot of questions about how we're going to come out of this. Uh, Obviously, the shorter that we can make this, the more, uh, more, the easier it will be to to emerge from from the crisis. But uh, we're looking for some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, you know, Steve, I used to say, and uh, before we got into this, uh, at most of the speeches I would give, I say, you know, this is the longest economic expansion that I've ever experienced in my 58 years, uh, my 34 years in professional management of organizations. And it seems like we were hitting on all cylinders in greater Fort Lauderdale and really doing some great things in all different aspects of development. Um, I, I see people still out working. I see some jobs still going out there in the development industry. Currently, um, what's your sense for what's going on out there? Are they still uh, developing actively? Well, when you've got projects that are under construction in the development phase, um, financing has already been acquired, contracts have already been already been let. You need to you need to complete the process. Uh, fortunately, our governor has identified construction and land development as an essential service. Uh, he recognizes that once you've begun the development process, you can't just stop in the middle of construction. It creates dangers, creates inefficiencies. And jobs are impacted, and a lot of these jobs are outside and can be conducted in a safe manner. Uh, and so we're seeing that in, in many cases construction is continuing. However, 
Uh, that construction is very uh, contingent upon a partner in government and having governmental access to governmental permits and governmental inspections. And um, we're also seeing a reaction in some cities to construction activities that are taking place. Some municipalities are choosing to go beyond the state of Florida governor's order and restrict um, construction activities within their cities. I would suggest that that's not the right thing to be doing right now because it, it puts people and property at risk. Uh, and sometimes it, it's, it's due to people being home and recognizing the cost and the, and the disruptions of having construction next door that they might not notice uh, if they were going to work every day. So uh, while we see construction continuing, a lot of times it's on a little bit more of a bare bones staff. And I do see some indications, particularly in Miami Beach, of a reaction to the ongoing construction activities. And I think that's, uh, that's not where we should be going uh, if we're gonna try and preserve that sector of the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it briefly about the governor's e emergency order. Uh, I stopped counting at about 15 emergency orders, but you've been keeping track of those. What's, what's been the impact of those emergency orders on the development sector? And do you think there's any more need for clarity or consistency in the application of these orders that are going out? Well, I don't think that the government, that the development sector has been uh, hit that much more than every other sector. Um, the fact that construction is identified as an ongoing uh, and essential service, I think has been helpful. So to that extent, uh, construction can continue as long as it's con continued in a safe uh, manner. Um, there are other sectors of the economy uh, that are, re are really being hit hard. Uh, and, and there is some lack of clarity in when it comes to essential services and essential businesses. One business uh, area that I'll identify uh, that is subject to a significant amount of uncertainty is the marine service industry, marinas and marine service industry. Um, the governor's order references Miami-Dade County and the Miami-Dade County list of essential services. Uh, in Miami-Dade County, uh, there was some interesting developments that occurred when uh, initially uh, the Dade County uh, uh, emergency order exempted marinas and marine services as an essential service. Then you may recall there was some news coverage of partying on the sandbars uh, and there was a reaction to that in Miami-Dade County government and they went back and they revised their, or their order to remove that exemption uh, or significantly limit that exemption for marine services. And the marine marinas have been basically shut down in South Florida since then. But interestingly, in other parts of Florida, marinas and marine services are not being shut down. Uh, in Collier County, for instance, uh, all the Collier County, uh, county-owned marinas and marine facilities are still open. Uh, Chokoloski, Everglades City have their marinas open. Uh, in, in Central Florida and even St. Lucie County, we're seeing marinas continuing to operate. So South Florida may be operating, in Fort Lauderdale in particular, uh, are operating under a, a different interpretation of the limitation of what an essential service is than other parts of the state. It's a big part of our economy in South Florida. I think it lacks some clarity. And it would be nice for the governor and Broward County and, and Miami-Dade County to get all get on the same page as to what is or is not an essential service as related to the marine economy. Yeah, well, you sound like you're speaking from some experience. Uh, I'm sensing that you may have been looking for a, uh, a boat ramp. <laughs> I, I, I was last weekend, and then this week I've been uh, representing clients that are, in, that are in the marine industry and trying to get clarity uh, in Broward County, Palm Beach County, and other counties as to whether they can and cannot open their marina, what services they can provide at the marina. It's it's a very uh, uncertain area right now. Well, I, I, I know that from my discussions with the 
mayors uh, in Broward and Miami-Dade uh, that uh, their biggest concern was containing community spread. And I think their focus sometimes, uh, as you know, um, politicians, elected officials tend to overreact and shut everything down or do something that perhaps has some unintended consequences. But the gist of it was they had, they were getting these people doing these boat tie ups and, and having people together in Lake Boca or wherever. And that was the, the reason for this uh, in their mind. So it hit everybody, even the people who weren't doing that. And that was unfortunate, uh, something that happens on these issues. Uh, let me ask you this, Steve, as it relates to uh, coming out of this, uh, and we will come out of it, and everybody knows that we're going to make it through this, uh, this crisis, this pandemic. Uh, how do you see uh, your sector that you represent with your clients, how do you see that coming back? And how long will it take before we get back? Or where will we ever get back to the, to the rates and, and status that we have right now? Well, I, I'm certain that we will, uh, we will have a comeback in South Florida. We're a vital economy. We've got a lot of things going for us. So there's a lot of money that wants to be spent here and a lot of people that want to live here. We are going to recover in South Florida. So I'm not worried about the prospect of a recovery. I think there's a lot of things that government can do to facilitate and make that recovery quicker. One of the first things that government can do is get government opening, open and operating again in an efficient manner. Um, there are certain aspects of our local government that are functioning right now, but there are many that are not. And believe it or not, the businesses rely upon government in order to get things done. Uh, so uh, first thing I'd like to see is, is our elected officials find ways to continue operating and open government back up and fast track uh, the permitting and reviews and the backlog, it's going to be a backlog of business that, uh, that's been pending during this shutdown, this unprecedented shutdown. Nothing like this has ever happened short of a hurricane and even hurricanes don't shut everything in the entire state down. So getting government back open is, is a, for my sector, for our sector, the development sector is an essential, essential thing to do. We also need to shore up our financial institutions uh, just so that they're willing to lend, that they don't, uh, they're not risk averse when we emerge from this. And also I'm sure there's gonna be insurance issues, uh, facilitating insurance claims, landlord tenant resolutions, all of that uh, can and should get us going again, getting our court system open again, uh, so that there's the, the backlog can be relieved there as well. I, I think that the, the legal sector um, is continuing to operate, but we're all reliant upon government and, and the financial sector as well. But that, uh, all the courts are closed, aren't they? They are closed now. Um, yeah. Perhaps there's ways to open them up on a partial basis to find ways to get those dockets, uh, at least for motion hearings and other types of hearings moving again. Um, we're reliant upon that sector to keep our business going. We're talking with Steve Tilbrook from Ackerman Law Firm. He's also the chair elect of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. Steve, you, you have had a, held a number of posts at the Chamber. Um, how important has the Chamber been in, in your professional career? Well, I enjoy service. And the, the Chamber is an excellent uh, opportunity for service to, to really benefit the business sector and to get to know and work together hand in hand with other business leaders. Uh, I, I went through leadership Fort Lauderdale when I was a younger lawyer. I, participated in the downtown council for seven years and chaired the downtown council. The downtown is near and dear to my heart. And so I, uh, I still feel very uh, closely aligned with the business interests in the downtown. Uh, and then I also chaired the government affairs committee because that's uh, inherent in, in my line of business. So uh, all of those things have, have really helped me grow as a lawyer and also grow my practice and also serve my clients. Uh, th this is all about serving our clients and, and becoming better business leaders in that. 
the chamber is really well positioned to help our business leaders do that. But you, you know, you get out of the chamber what you can put into it. So I've, I've enjoyed my service. I'm looking forward to revival of the uh, of the chamber economy uh, for this year, and I'm looking forward to service next year as the incoming chair or the chair in uh, 2021. Well, we certainly appreciate all your service, Steve, and uh, not just with the chamber, but with all of the organization in which you uh, take a leadership role really here in the greater Fort Lauderdale region. Steve, any closing thoughts that you might have for our audience today? I, I think uh, we should be optimistic that this is going to uh, uh, improve quickly. Uh, I think we should remember that we're lucky to be where we are in uh, the economy that we have enjoyed for so long in South Florida. We're going to emerge from this. Uh, I'm, I do count on our business leaders to help us uh, emerge, I count on our government leaders to be a partner with business as we emerge and uh, to help and, and foster that that growth that we enjoyed for so long. We, we have had a sustained period of growth and I think we can return to it. I, the fortunate thing about this downturn is I think it's going to be uh, specific to the coronavirus and quick. So I'm optimistic about the future. I want to thank you, Dan, and the Chamber for all you're doing for the greater Fort Lauderdale business community and, and also for the South Florida business community. We, uh, you're a shining light uh, for our business community and our community leaders. So I want to thank you and uh, I look forward to uh, emerging from this downturn a stronger and more vital community. We've been talking with Steve Tilbrook, a partner with Ackerman, also the chair elect for the greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. You've been listening to podcast series for business brought to you by the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber, the South Florida Business Council, the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, and the Chamber of the Palm Beaches. Remember, you can get more information by going to ftlchamber.com slash COVID-19.